to order. I'd like to introduce everybody and welcome Pat Patrick Ball to the to the group. He'll be replacing Cheryl Gilbert. And uh, thank you for stepping in and taking on the responsibility. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. Oops. How are you doing, Pat? Welcome. Welcome. And have a good ball. We'll do the, the minutes. Did everybody get a chance to look over the minutes? Yeah. Evenings. So, Terry, you still move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Larry seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Minutes are all set. Okay. Uh, start the referrals. Sorry, when I shut this down, I, I lost a few things, so it's just going to take me a couple of minutes to get. Okay, here's the agenda. So the first project will be uh, 20056. It's next day at Ghent, Solar Site A and B, Michael Schramm, applicant. Okay, um, so the referring agency is the Town of Gap Planning Board. Uh, the referring agency is the Planning Board and the location is New York State Route 9H on the western side. It's across from, uh, it's near Meadow Greens and the Columbia County Airport. You can see the tip of it here, under the airport here. And this is the outline of the parcel. It's approval uh, of a site plan and issuance of a special use permit to install a solar energy system. Uh, the existing zoning is RRA1 and C1. The existing land use is vacant with some ag use on it. Um, surrounding land use, as I mentioned, is residential ag, Columbia County Airport and Meadow Greens Golf Course. They are proposing uh, the solar array in which will have 59,000 panels. Uh, each panel is approximately 13 by 13. The parcel is 160.3 acres and it's referred to as the Old Mill Solar, which will be a community solar project um, with two sites. Let's see, Let's see to the other. Oh. I'm really sorry about this, that it, when it shut down, I lost my tabs. Um,
Have we seen this one before? We have seen it, but we did not see the, um, we did not see the site plan. It was referred to us before for the uh, zoning ordinance amendment that was necessary in order for this application to come forward for site plan because um, it was partially zoned commercial and partially right. zoned the rural residential. And it was like a swap, is this that, one? At this that, that, um, that zoning amendment was passed by the town board and it was a joint uh, coordinated seeker review between the town board and the planning board. The planning board was lead agency and they uh, issued a neg deck and the zoning amendment was passed. And we had uh, submitted a number of comments. Patrice? Uh, yes. Before we get started, we've got a, a celebrity here wants us to say hello to us. As usual, it took me forever. To get Cheryl joined us. <laughs> Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. I'm stopping in just to say goodbye to everybody. It's been a pleasure to work with you, and it's a privilege, and thank you so much. Well, I, I especially have enjoyed our time together. We've been together on the board for quite a while. Not quite as long as Art was, but... It's been a long time. Fun working with you, and hopefully next year you'll be out there singing again in the church. Like that would do. be nice. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, don't let me interrupt. I just it took me this no. long to get in. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> well, that's okay, Cheryl. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for stopping in. You're a nice diversion because I lost uh, I lost some data on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bamboozled right now, so. Um. Happy holidays to you, Cheryl. And thank you, Tim. And thank you, everybody. Uh, you well. Nice working with everybody. Talk with you. Right. So. Yep. Yeah. Bye. Okay, so we got is Rick joining. Okay, we're there we go. There. I don't know where he is. There. We lost Rick now, too. Yeah. Well, it says he's here somewhere. Was Waldo, what'd you do with Rick? <laughs> Bye. There, <laughs> there he is. There he is. <laughs> hey, Rick. Hey. How we doing? Good. We were just getting started here with the, the referrals with the Gent project. All right. <laughs> okay. And I lost I lost my screen, so I'm trying to get them back. So you didn't miss anything. <sighs> there we go. Well, there was another one that's November, dated November 20th. That's the one I was trying to find. This one is dated August 20th. This one had a lot of information submitted with it. It did, it? and that's why <laughs> it was organized in a little bit differently. And uh, so we're, we'll just have to go with this one. I'm trying to find the other one, and I can't find it. it took me a while to get it all set up because they were the way they uh, way it was organized. I apologize. That's okay. There we go. Okay. So Okay. So as I mentioned, the, this is the location of the solar arrays. Um, there will be uh, a proposed access off of 9H that will run through the arrays. Um, it, there will be a fence uh, around the perimeter. You can see here. 
there's also um, a number of, uh, there will be a stormwater management plan. Uh, and they're also trying to maintain the existing vegetation, but it does require some removal. For the soils, uh, there are highly productive ag soils present on the site. Let me get back to that. As you can see, there are some prime farmland. This is the brownish color. The ochre color are uh, farmland of statewide importance and the Aqua color here is uh, prime farmland if drained. So there would be uh, locations of the arrays that will uh, be on this area here in the, in the ag soils. Um, there's also wetlands present on site. It's not going to show up, is it? This is. I am so. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> this is awful. Uh, Well, I don't have that map either. I'm sorry. Um, there is a decommissioning plan that was proposed uh, by the company, the developer, and there were letters of no impact from the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, Historic Preservation. As I mentioned before, the seeker was a type one action and it was a coordinated review. Um, the parcel, as I mentioned, con contains four wetlands and also uh, New York State DEC wet regulated wetlands. And there are also parcels adjacent to this that are located in an ag district. As you can see these gold parcels are located in Columbia County Certified Ag District. Um, the town has identified uh, a number of benefits to this project that the there would be a pilot agreement with the project uh, where the town would have an increased revenue of $250,000 over 15 years. Um, the community solar project would provide $40,000 in additional funding to the town for discretionary projects. Um, they're also saying that it, consistent with the comprehensive plan in the promote because it promotes green development. And the town would also uh, receive credits or uh, benefit financially for 40% of the output of the project can be sold to the town of Gantt uh, for electricity to be used in the municipal buildings or account credits. Um, it also would allow residential subscribers in the town and surrounding areas uh, comprising 60% of the project output and would qualify for a 10% discount. Um, so the, the last time we saw this project for the zoning amendment, we uh, made a, many comments and uh, some were addressed and others were not, but um, they made the decision to change the zoning to allow this project. The town is in support of, the town board was in support of that change. Um, our staff recommendation is for approval. Um, we have some comments though. First, the approval is contingent upon them being able to comply with all local, state, and federal regulations. Also noting that the project is contiguous to parcels in an ag district and an ag data statement was required, which was submitted and prepared. So noting that. Also, uh, second comment, number 12 in the EAF lists that there's a possible airport-related matter with the Columbia County Department of Public Works there was a glare analysis that was associated with those concerns and uh, that was included in the package and they found that it would not 
present an issue with operations at the airport. Also, uh, noting that there would be nicer to tax relief as well as pilot pro for the town and cost savings for electricity in the town buildings. Also noting for stormwater pollution and prevention that uh, a stormwater pollution prevention plan would be required in uh, permitting for New York City DEC. Also, there would be a work permit as necessary from the New York State Department of Transportation for the access off of New York State Route 9H. Also noting that there was a letter from the FAA, a letter of no impact was provided. Also for the presence of wetlands that permitting would be required from, potentially required from DEC and the Corps of Engineers. Also suggesting that the local fire chief review and noting that a decommissioning plan was prepared. Um, so that is the staff recommendation. Is there any other, can I show you anything else on these drawings if I can find them? I'm happy to do so. Go back to anything you'd like to see. I want to see all of them. <laughs> okay. Go through each, we can go through each folder. No, no I don't. Each no. <laughs> do, you, do you have like a road view? Wasn't there something? Like a, 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 the photo simulations? Not that, so, no, just that. There you go. <laughs> This, these are details. Right. No, I thought there was one that showed the schematic even of what it's, or maybe I was thinking of the, do they have, was there an aerial thing up the look from the road? This? Yeah. Did they have one where they're actually on the road looking at it? As far as telephone poles and things like that, that would be there. I don't have the photo simulations on the drive that were included with the showing the. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about with all the yeah. vegetation? They don't have they don't have that. I don't have those up on the drive. Right, but they didn't have. Do they show how the how the connections can be made to the to, to the, the poles? To the line outside, yeah, to the outside. This. Is the is the property higher than the road or lower than the road? I'm looking at the contours and I can't figure out which way they go. Uh, it is. That side is higher, isn't it? Higher. It's higher, slightly higher. Mostly. How much? Though? Mostly sort of, sort of level. It's not really. Um, it's not much. High. Let's get the topo map back up here. So the topo. I mean, the topography doesn't really screen this. It needs the vegetation. Correct. And it will remove, they will be removing vegetation, obviously, to put the um, array in. Okay. But there's a lot of low areas. You see these are all, these dark areas are all uh, stream wetland areas. Mm -hmm. So um, it is, it's, So all of this, all of this hatched area, all of these areas in here are streams with associated wetland areas. So, so Patrick, just to explain to you, there's there's options, few options that the board has on projects. We have approval, disapproval, modification. Those are basically uh, those decisions are made primarily. Well, they're made not primarily. But they're made in accordance with the with the guidelines that are laid down for the for the county planning boards. I think Patrice emailed that to you. With just like certain standards. And then the other thing that you'll see, I'm sure some of the other projects will fall into this is, is a local decision where we feel that there's no countywide impact. And quite often when we see those, we'll offer suggestions. 
the suggestions we offer are more like uh, as if we see it as an extra set of eyes or or the or the staff has picked up some technical thing or something like that we feel is is important enough to to, to add to the the comments but uh, okay yeah well, having said that, does anybody have any questions or comments about this project? Um, no. Just to ask a question, do we know, does the applicant own the property or are they leasing it? The applicant, Michael Schramm owns the property. Next amp will be this installer. Yep. So is the only reason I ask, I sat through a, a training on solar farms. And one of the, the big points that they drove in was if the if the owner of the solar field isn't um, the installer, um, and it they're on a lease land that they encourage um, the uh, the owner or someone to maintain a bond for decommissioning because they said they've seen a lot of people just they lease the land. And they get the viable life out of the solar farm, then they just walk away and leave the landowner with the the problem of getting rid of all the old solar equipment and stuff. So um, I don't know if anybody's heard anything about that or not, but that's one of the things that I experienced earlier in the year. So I attended that same program and the their recommendation was that the municipality should deal with the landowner as far as the decommissioning plan and not the leasee of the land. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because for for a long time it's been similar to the the cell towers. The community's always got involved and said, "Well, we'll we'll have the bond posted to protect our our community." Well, you were kind of holding holding the applicant hostage because technically you didn't really have an enforce an enforcement ability. I don't even know if that's a word, but let's go with it. But uh, yeah, so I think do we know where the we don't know anything about the decommissioning plan, just that there's one with the trees. There is one. I'll pull it out right now. I'll get to that section. So it looks like the company that's doing it is doing the decommissioning, not the landowner. They're proposing a performance bond of thirty thousand uh, thirty thousand per megawatt um, es with escalator. Um, so it took for a total of three hundred ninety nine thousand. Let's see. There's the system, NYSERDA system. Uh, let's get to the other part. There's another document I'm trying to find. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the escrow.
I'm not able to find the letter that I'm looking for, and I haven't committed it to memory. So I can show you this. I think if we include it as a comment, um, and if I find the letter before I send the letter out, uh, that would be my suggestion. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's worth noting. It's a good point, Patrick. Yeah. Is there any other questions or comments? Nope. Nope. If not, we'll entertain a motion. This is where the group really moves really fast, Patrick. You'll, you'll, you'll have a tough time trying to keep up with them sometimes. They get going so fast. I'll make a motion. We accept staff's recommendation. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. I'll second it. Oh, Hookie, there you are. Hookie seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion's carried. Project's approved. Comment. Okay, maybe this one will go a little bit more smoothly, but um, Okay, uh, the next application referral is 2057V, Town of New Lebanon Planning Board. The applicant is Andrew Schrump. The location is 906 State Route 20. Um, it is the location, if anyone is familiar with uh, where the Shed Man used to be. This site here previously, uh, it's currently owned by the uh, previous owner of the Shed Man, but this is the site where uh, this applicant is proposing to establish a landscaping company. Um, it's approval of a site plan and issuance of a special use permit within 500 feet of uh, Route 20. Right, this is Route 20. The existing zoning is CR2, existing land use is uh, commercial, surrounding land use is residential and commercial. This, uh, there are existing structures on site. As you can see in the aerial, the, obviously the little sheds wouldn't be there, but there are uh, other structures that are not temporary structures. The parcel is approximately two acres in size, and uh, the special use permit is required to establish a landscape company, including storage and sale of landscape bulk materials, including mulch, soil, and gravel. Um, they've categorized this use as professional trades operation with accessory retail and bulk storage. The a proposed use for the existing structures would include storage of landscaping equipment, trucks, trailers, mowers, and uh, excavation equipment and when, when they're not in use, and then also a business office. So here's the one structure for the equipment storage. Uh, the second structure here, and then this area for proposed truck trailer parking. The sale of materials are intended, uh, expected to be remote with deliveries being made by the company. Um, these areas over here are the proposed bulk bunkers or bins where they would store the mulch and the soil and the gravel. Um, they anticipate employees would load the equipment and work off, you know, load the equipment in the mornings and then leave to work off site on the jobs and at the end of the day return to unload. 
<clears throat> the hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. The existing access is off of Route 20 here. Um, there are two drives, and on the one hand-drawn um, site plan, they're showing arrows saying uh, the circulation would be in this direction, what, looking like one way in, one way out. This plan does not necessarily reflect that. It doesn't have a note uh, if that's the intention. Um, they're also proposing parking area for employees and the would be here, like the parking for the trailers and trucks over in this area. The existing lighting would remain. There's a proposed uh, freestanding sign. They're also proposing landscaping and screening in these areas, these dark green areas here on the sides. Um, there's an existing on-lot well and septic system. And there's an existing buffer that was for the previous use as well. And they're proposing to maintain this buffer and existing tree line in this area. There's also on the rear of the parcel. The federal wetlands are this sort of cornflower blue, and this are the New York State DEC regulated freshwater wetlands here in the aqua. The site plan approval was granted to the shed man for operation. Uh, in 2018 for the previous use, and they made a determination that it would have to be another site plan because it was a different type of use. We didn't find that there was any countywide impact from this. A couple of comments, the DOT suggested that they contact DOT, see if there's any changes that are necessary. There is no curbing here. There are two access drives off of 20, and it's just flat without curb or controlled entranceway. And the second uh, comment would, is not, should be removed. Disregard that comment, please. So it's just the one comment with pertaining to DOT and the access off of 20. Okay. Oh, sorry. The second, the third comment, which would, would be number three, but actually number two, pertaining to the, the well and the septic system, contact Department of Health, Columbia County Department of Health, for any necessary review and approvals for those. So two comments, okay. access and health department. Any questions or comments? No. Nope. Nope. Make a motion. Larry so moves for local decision. Is there a second? I'll second it. Terry seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, next rule is 2058V, the town of Kinderhook Planning Board. The applicant at Coney Island Auto uh, PCJ Development LLC, Paul Calcagno. The location is 3405 US Route 9. And this is a little, just a, a street view of this is the area here, this vacant parcel, undeveloped parcel. It's on Route 9 in the town of Kinderhook. This business to the north, directly to the north is Mavis. And to the south is the St. Joseph's Spiritual Life Center. The requested action is an auto detail and sales use. Approval of a site plan within 500 feet of a state highway. The existing zoning is B1 MFO. 
the existing land use is vacant, undeveloped, surrounding commercial, residential, and St. Joseph's. Proposed structure is 5,000 square feet and the parcel is approximately two acres. Um, site plan review is required to construct the building and establish an auto detail and sales use Coney Island Auto. As I mentioned, it's located between Mavis and St. Joseph's. The proposed structure would be a Morton building. Okay, so the proposed structure here would be a prefab Morton building, approximately 5,000 square feet, proposing access via a shared driveway that is with the uh, Mavis use that is directly north. There's existing access, curbed access off of nine, and it would connect in here with the access drive. The there would be a canopied roof area for displaying vehicles under the ledge, as well as uh, this area in the front for car display and the car sales area. Um, there was an interior showroom proposed as well as a repair facility. There would be uh, overhead doors where the cars would drive into the repair area. The sales lot would be gravel for approximately 56 cars. There were parking, five parking spaces for customers and five for employees on the north side. <coughs> An employee to the rear. It's proposed well, this location and the septic system is on the southern side of the structure. Stormwater drainage proposed to incorporate dry wells. Uh, there would be lighting, but none proposed for the front of the structure. There's also a proposed sign along the roadway. Some screening along the south side and the rear of the parcel. And there's also a proposed dumpster located right here. And, and also an ag data statement is required because it is adjacent. Two parcels that are located within an ag district. So these gold parcels again are ag district parcels. Um, we did not find that there was any countywide impact from this couple of comments, but I'll first I'll get back to the elevations. Is this the guy that owns all the kinder hook here, the bagels and all that stuff? Yeah, that's his his son runs the real place in Kinderhook. I believe. Right? Right, Patrick? I don't know this guy personally. Okay. So this is the these are the elevations of the structure. This would be the front that faces uh, the highway. This is the side or the northern side facing uh, Mavis and the south side. Okay. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, we didn't find any countywide impact from this couple of comments. First, pertaining to the well and septic, uh, the contact Department of Health for any necessary review and approvals. Um, also noting that the soils are, let's get to that. There are prime farmland soils on the site. So I'd like to uh, note that the proposed development on the parcel, that these soils are present and it would result in a loss of the prime farmland soils. And also it mentioned before that ag data statement is required pursuant to New York State Department of Ag and Markets Law 305A because it's within 500 feet of parcels within the certified ag district, which may have actively farmed land. 
Patrice, do we know if there was a SWIP done on this? It looks like it's more than an acre of development and a tremendous amount of um, impervious surface there. Let me get to the coverage here. I do not know that there was. Um, let me get to. Again, it's, it's, the disturbance looks yeah, like. Yeah, we could just add the comment that they should look into that. Yeah. Then, you know. do they show anything as far as the traffic flow and, and with DOT? Has DOT been asked to look at this again? The road cut. Could add that as a comment as well. Okay. Anybody else got any questions or comments? I just want to say that this is my town board, so I'm going to recuse myself from the vote. You, you, you don't have to recuse yourself because you, the planning board will be the ones voting on this. Okay. But if you're not comfortable, I don't we're not going to approve it. We're just going to make recommendations. Is that the reasoning? Well, no, I mean, you're, 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 your town board is not going to see this. You as a town board are not going to view this. So you're not going to vote on it. Usually, if you if we had a, if you were a planning board member sitting on the board, you'd recuse yourself. Like Larry will, will do it, and Terry will at times, and Ed, too, from the, the town of Greenport. Projects that, that, you, that you will be voting on later. And, and Hooky, sometimes, he'll, he will, he's on the club record town board there, there's certain projects in Clavrec that that understandably he's i mean if you're not comfortable i don't, I don't want to talk you into anything but it's up to you well i'm going to be voting on this because i'm a i'm on the planning board oh you are on the planning board. i thought we yeah. were okay well that's good good thing you spoke up and said something okay <laughs> 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 thank you Sorry, okay. I thought everybody was aware. I didn't know. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. But that still didn't get us a motion from anybody yet. I'll make that motion. Okay. A second. Okay, so I'll move Rick seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And we have one abstention. Patrick? Sorry for the confusion there. <laughs> no problem. My fault. <clears throat> So now that means it's got to go to uh, the town that down. No, it's going to go to uh, just to the planning board. It's just just, just planning board. No, it's going to go back to the to the town Kindred planning board. That's where Patrick will see it again. Oh, uh, okay. That was my my mistake. So then Patrick would decide in, in his group. Type of yep. Thing. Okay, um, this is the last referral. It's 20059, Town of Stuyvesant uh, Planning Board. The applicant at Hill Motors, Paul Calcagno, same uh, the person that was the, uh, the previous referral. This guy's in everything. Um, this is the existing structure. It is located also on Route 9, 2178 Route 9. It's across from uh, Wool Rock. If you're familiar with that in the town of Stuyvesant, the large farm. Oh, okay. Um, you can see those large barns here. Proposed action is establishing an auto sales and purchasing office. It's approval of a site plan within 500 feet of Route 9. 
the existing zoning is a Hamlet extension. The existing land use is ag and residential. Surrounding is ag and residential. The parcel is approximately three acres in size. It's Site plan review is required to establish the business office to conduct a purchase and sale of autos under the name of Heal Motors LLC. The property is being leased from the owner, Leslie Dumont. It would be one of four tenants in the existing structure. Uh, this is an aerial view of it. See, there are four units, and this is where Heal Motors would be located in this uh, th unit number three. We're not proposing any changes to the existing structure. Uh, as I mentioned, there's existing access off of Route 9. Uh, according to the lease agreement, this use would have 10 sp parking spaces available. They're showing <coughs> three spaces right out in front where they would be displaying vehicles um, and a maximum of three cars would be displayed uh, at any one time in front of the structure. The customers are by appointment only and there's an existing sign out front right here, which you can see right there again. And then it's a little little roof on it. And um, they're not proposing, as I mentioned, any, any alterations to the structure. So we didn't find any countywide impact from this. I have a couple of comments that uh, the park, uh, suggesting that the applicant provide information on the location of the remaining spaces because the lease agreement notes that there are 10 spaces for this business. Also, um, the applicant provide any information, any proposed signage would be located here on the building. And also that an ag data, data statement is required because it is um, within 500 feet of parcels that are located within the Columbia County Ag District. You can see these gold parcels again, abutting it and across the road. So those three comments, no significant countywide impact Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I added a third one. It didn't come out in the. I added it after I printed them and put them on the on the um, on the drive for you guys. Okay. Three comments. The only question. Signing the ag data statement. Why would this need an approval of a site plan? It's not really changing. Getting a new tenant, but that's the only difference. It's the requirement of their zoning that this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When a new tenant comes in, they have to get an approved site plan. Patrice, could that be connected to the proposed use of the car sales and the display why they needed it? Yes, I would, yes. I think that maybe we want to comment also that the, the town plan or the town planning board may want to limit the number of cars that would be displayed there in their decision. Um, I've seen many of these where they get five cars and they've got 15 by the end of the week. <laughs> I mean, he does say it's only three. That was then I read something in his statements. <laughs> yes, he said yeah, the lease the lease reads 10. That's why the comment that I had about the parking. Right. These other those other seven spaces will be for whatever vehicles. So yeah. add that additional comment to sort of uh, bring that to the to the forefront. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, we'll ent entertain a motion. All right. Second. Rick, I'll move. second it. Visual comments. Pat, was that you? Who was the motion? Me. Rick. Who seconded it? Hokey. Hokey, thank you. Hokey seconded it. All, all those in favor? Aye. Um, all those opposed? Motion's carried. 
Again, my apologies for the confusion. I, well, you can't I, I usually use a different computer and we, we, we changed the equipment and um, I, I took full responsibility for that. I'm very sorry, I apologize. Well, I no need to. I think Rick, Rick Martino there, he's got the same saying that I do probably. You can't make a lot of money every day. You can't be successful at, at the computer stuff every day, Patrice. And you've done got, a great you know job, what? I think. Your percentage is pretty darn good. You're, you got it. You got the handle on it. Well, thanks for understanding. I appreciate it. You're a lot better than me doing it. <laughs> we know you're a lot better than me. No. Yep. Something to be said for being able to spread those drawings on the table and, you know, gather around and looking at it. And... <laughs> I've been reading Tim's book. Tim's got a book out. <laughs> yeah. So the other, the other item of business we need to, to conduct tonight is the election of officers to go into 2021. So, a... I make a motion. They stay the same. Is there a second to that? Okay. I'll second that. Second. All those in favor of keeping the slate? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Larry, so, Larry you're, you're, you're going to be vice president again. See that? I'm uh, president. Yeah. It, was, it was hooking and edge, correct? Yep. I hope the play goes up. <laughs> and this is the, uh, the last for I'm something. going on vacation next week on this pay. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick was going away, but he, he had the same problem, I think. He found out he wasn't going to get paid as much either, so he's staying home too. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, I'd like to thank everybody who work, let me work with you, and it's been a pleasure. Hey, Hookie, I, I oh, really miss you. Pucky, we're going to miss you. I mean, it's been our pleasure, Hook. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I go to the county waste department there to dump off my construction debris, when I mention your name, I get a better spot at the pile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> the amount of pull you have there still. Yeah, I got so much pull. I had a two and a half inch roofing now on my front tire a couple Ooh. of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Copeg now. <laughs> Are you jumping on us, huh? <laughs> yeah, I do miss going to uh, Helsinki after this. Yeah, and, but you didn't. You didn't hear the uh, the chairman made a uh, decision that you're still going to have to foot the bill for us. Oh, I figured you'd want to give us a Christmas you. party, wouldn't you? <laughs> I could have a Christmas party if you want one. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Usually, Steve has the cannolis for us. We're going to miss yeah. that this year. I know yeah, the eggnog. Eggnog. Yeah. yeah. Next year. Next year. Hopefully. So guys, I don't know if you guys saw on the I don't know if you guys saw on the paper, but just the, the day after our last meeting, Art Kowick had passed away just before our last meeting. Oh. And so I just like to to, to his remembrance I'd like to close the meeting tonight. And oh, uh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he oh, passed man. away. They didn't put the obituary in until after uh, the services were held and everything. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've worked with Art for many, many years, as Patrice did, and uh, I would certainly uh, make a motion that we close the meeting in Art's honor. Yeah. yeah. He loved this time of the year, it's having the family near him and yeah. that. So, yeah, <laughs> great guy. Yep. Great guy. Yep. One in a million. You're going to be missed, I'll tell you. Yep. So with that said, we'll close the Columbia County Planning Board meeting for September 2020. Hopefully 2021 is going to be a better year. Right. So. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Right. Thank you. And same Merry to you. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Stay safe, guys. Yep. Be safe. Thank you all. Good job, Patrice. Yeah. <laughs>